Come November, Florida voters will get to decide on a ballot referendum that would restore voting rights to felons who have done their time. Right now, more than one and a half million ex-felons in the state can't vote. One in five of them is African American. Under the current system put in place by Governor Rick Scott back in 2011, ex-felons, aside from murderers and sex offenders, must wait five to seven years following the end of their sentence, including probation time, to request their voting rights be restored. They have to go to Tallahassee and appear before a clemency board led by the governor and three elected cabinet members to plead their case. The governor has full veto power over any decision. This process has reportedly created a backlog of some 10,000 requests. But recently, U.S. District Judge Mark Walker has blocked the state's process, ruling it to be unconstitutional, giving the governor until April the 26th to come up with a better plan. On his ruling, Judge Walker says in part, to vote again, disenfranchised citizens must kowtow before a panel of high-level government officials over which Florida's governor has absolute veto authority. No standards guide the panel. Its members alone must be satisfied that these citizens deserve restoration. The question now is whether such a system passes constitutional muster. It does not, end quote. Here to share more is Charles Zeldin, professor in the Department of History and Political Science at Nova Southeastern University. Professor, always great to have you joining Good us. Good to be here. All right, this is kind of a two-prong issue here, and we're going to get to the details on that later. We have this federal judge saying what you guys are doing in Florida is unconstitutional. Governor, you need to fix it. And then we have the referendum that's going to be coming up yeah. on the ballot in November where voters get to really decide on this issue. But before we dive into all of that, let's go back in history. A lot of folks don't realize that this law comes from the Civil War era days. This is a Jim Crow law. So fill the, us in on the history of the, all of the this, right? The intent in Florida of excluding felons for life came about as an effort to exclude African Americans from the vote. It came in the late 19th century. It was part of a, of, a, of a series of efforts that collectively disenfranchised 99% of African Americans. And as a result, it, it has racist roots. Uh, the, 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 the intent, and the, the people who passed this were very open about it, was to exclude African Americans from voting. And it was then added to and we just never changed it. And this was because the state was protesting the 14th Amendment's clause of equal protection, correct? Equal protection and due process okay. of, of law. All right. Uh, so, that's, so that's where it comes from. Yes. By the way, Florida is, in Iowa and Kentucky are the only states in the nation that have these lifetime bans on felons. Yes, so. other states um, have bans, all states have bans, well, no, I shouldn't say it. Most states have bans while you're in jail, sure. while you're on probation. Other states then will say you have to wait two years, five years, maybe even 10 years, but then you automatically get your civil rights back. But these three states say you do not unless you petition explicitly to get it, and that's where the clemency board comes in. All up. right, so let's talk about this federal judge's ruling. He's giving the state till April the 26th to make some sort of change. Take us through what he's saying and what needs to be done in order to comply with what he's saying is unconstitutional. In order to pass constitutional muster in terms of due process of law and in terms of equal protection, the, the, the process by which felons petition to regain their voting rights needs to be consistent. It needs to be uh, not arbitrary. Right. It needs to be something that the end result is the same for all who come in in similar situations. And that's not what happens here. The decision-making process is completely in the hands of the board. They can accept or deny anyone for any reason or no reason. And as a result, it, it fails the test of equal protection of the law. One person gets their voting rights back. Another person doesn't. They committed the same crime at roughly the same time, and they've both met all the requirements necessary to petition. Right. Why? And that's where the judge comes in and says, that's not constitutional. He's saying there needs to be meaningful benchmarks. Yes, it, it has to be meaningful, it has to be clear, right. and it has to be consistent. Okay, so let's talk about this referendum now, which is on the ballot. 
You've met the gentleman yes. who spearheaded this, Desmond Mead. Tell us a little bit about his story. And by the way, to get this referendum, he had to at least get 750,000 voter signatures. He got 766,000. Yes. So Not walk an easy us process. through his story. His story was is that he committed a felony as a young man. He came out of the system. He cleaned up his life. He went to law school. He became an attorney. And he couldn't, get his, he couldn't vote. And he thought this was wrong. And so he began a campaign, an effort, to restore voting rights for felons in Florida. They organized this effort with volunteers. Mm -hmm. Normally when you get something on, the, on the, the constitutional ballot, people are paid to get signatures. This was done all with volunteers. They got more signatures than they needed to get it on the ballot. And so now the choice is going to be that uh, left us the people of Florida whether we want to automatically restore voting rights to nonviolent felons and those who have not committed a, a sexual... Uh, a murder uh, or some sort of sexual crime. Sexual crime. Right. As long as, uh, leaving those people aside, as long as you've done your time, there's no more probation left, there's no parole left, you've made all restitution, you did your time in jail, as long as you are clear and clean with the state, you automatically would get back your voting rights. Yeah, that's it. No clemency board. No clemency you're board. Done. You're done. It's automatic. Again, the key is you have to you have to pay your you have to you know pay your price. Right. Do your time. But once that's done, and once you're a full member of society again, you would get your voting rights back. The key to this uh, initiative is it doesn't have to be just a majority vote. It needs to be a 60% supermajority vote. Right. And a Quinnipiac poll, a recent poll, showed that the majority of Florida voters are for this referendum, correct? Yes, okay. and, 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 and partly it's a question, as always with elections, who shows up? Mm -hmm. uh, if if, if the, there's a, a lot of enthusiasm to vote, if we have not midterm numbers, but we have presidential year numbers, there's a really good chance that this will pass. And quickly, because we're running out of time, this could certainly change the landscape, if you will, if more of these felons are allowed to vote, correct? Well, first of all, it's a, it's a million and a half people yeah. who can't vote now being able to vote. Right. Secondly, 25% of the African American community in Florida is excluded from voting because of, of, of felonies. If they all get back their right to vote, that's an increase of 25% in the African American community. Mm -hmm. That is going to have major impacts in terms of the outcome of elections. Same thing within the, the Hispanic community. Um, and in general, yeah. it's just when you add in that many new voters, it changes the... Uh, the, the fabric of... The fabric and, and, and the, the way you figure out who's going to vote and, 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 and what you need to yeah. win. Charles, great to have you with us as My always. Pleasure. Thank you so Thank much you. for your perspective. We appreciate it. And do you think felons' voting rights should be restored? Send us your thoughts on this or any other topic that matters to you. You can send us a message or a video via email. You can do so to our Facebook page at your South FL. We look forward to hearing from you.